Good, happy Saturday morning, December 15, 2018. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. First up, prosecutors, voicemail, captured assault of Manchester father who later died. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9, Jennifer Crompton. Try out Lazy Boy at Cardi's Furniture. Lazy Boy's reclining sofas, love seats, and recliners are the gold standard of the industry. Take advantage of Cardi's no interest financing for up to 60 months. Lazy Boy recliners start at just $2.98. Cardi's Furniture. 29-year-old Jeffrey Snow faces upgraded charges of manslaughter and negligent homicide. He was arrested in Massachusetts 10 days ago, wanted by Manchester police since July. Their prime suspect in an assault that left 32-year-old Urban Cannon, a local father of six, unconscious in a downtown alley near the alehouse. He died five days later. He sustained blood force trauma to the rear left side of his head, behind and above the left side of his ear. The state claims that Snow and Cannon, who they refer to by his initials UC, were seen pushing and shoving each other nearby. That witnesses saw Cannon walk into the alley and Snow follow him. Prosecutors say there is video, but that the assault moves off camera. They also reference a voicemail. They say the victim was leaving at the time of the alleged assault. What you hear is UC stating, I'm calling someone, um, get away from me or words to that effect. You hear a loud thud and a strike. And then you hear a statement by another person saying, wow, he got knocked out. And then another person shouting, there you go, there you go. The defense says that's not enough and, evidence. But no one saw a punch. There's no punch on the video, apparently. So there's no conclusive proof that anyone was hit by anyone. I, no one has, no one's saying I saw that happen. And we also know that the defendant then proceeded to leave the alley high-five his friends and dance around and show no remorse for what just happened. Snow is being held without bail, at least until his evidentiary hearing on Monday. We're live in Manchester, Jennifer Crompton, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Ninety-four-year-old New Hampshire World War II veteran receives long overdue Purple Heart. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9, Mike Cherry. This is what 74 years in the making looks like for World War II veteran Francis Byrne. This is to certify that the President of the United States has awarded the Purple Heart. As for how it feels... It's all full of bubbles right now. In 1944, Byrne was injured in Belgium when a landmine exploded. Byrne didn't slow down, he just returned to action. But he's a great example of the greatest generation, too, you know. They, they fought in World War II, they came home, they started families, they built... Um, this country to what it is today. And today may not have happened if not for Jeanette Chasen, who petitioned the Army for a Purple Heart. She met Francis while holding a door for him at the Elliott and opened a metaphorical door in the process. I can't think of a better way that I ever could have honored a veteran, let alone a World War II veteran, um, from a simple thank you for your service. This is what came of that. It's definitely worth it. 
Yeah. And I'm proud of everybody that's had anything to do with it. Pride felt across all branches of the military. Dozens of veterans were in attendance for the ceremony. I never realized how tight-knit the, the, the military was, the veterans were, until this happened. At 94 years old and diagnosed with an aggressive cancer, Byrne says he has one mission left, filling that empty spot in his awards case with a Purple Heart. Something you can't really imagine because it's been so long ago. And I never thought it would really come true. Mike Cherry, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Hundred and seventy seventh New Hampshire Police Academy graduation held despite threat from former recruit. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9, Tim Callery. As Noah Bulio awaited his appearance in Merrimack County Superior Court, just down the road, 65 of his fellow New Hampshire Police Academy recruits marched their way into their graduation. The 24-year-old is accused of planning to fire his service weapon during the ceremony in an effort to hurt other officers. Accusations his attorney has denied. But this event was not about Bullio or his alleged plan. Rather, it was about this group and their oath to protect and serve. The staff and the instructors have prepared you for the beginning of your career. The rest will be up to you. Representing several different cities and towns across the state, these men and women will now join departments on the local and state level after going through extensive training for the past four months. It takes a long time. It takes a lot of time and effort and commitment, but I'm happy to be out and happy to be going back on the road. And Happy to help the community. This class has different reasons for wanting the job, but they all say it's that community aspect that draws them to the badge. And you have this great ability to influence change, and uh, really excited to get out there and uh, put all I learned here uh, to, to, to work. I just want to see everybody do well in life in my community, and I want to see everybody prosper the way they should. So just keeping everybody safe and helping out whatever way I can. And these recruits say they learned a lot over the past 16 weeks, but the one thing they won't forget is the bond that they built together. I'm going to miss a lot of people, and it's going to be weird waking up Monday morning and not reporting back here. There was a lot of us. Uh, we, had, we had two leave throughout the academy, but we all stayed real close to each other the whole time. Definitely bonds will have for life. In Concord, I'm Tim Callery, WMUR News 9. Okay, there you go on that video and that report. All of us here at the Riley Kim Network congratulate all of the new graduations from the Police Academy. Salvation Army kettle donations down due to volunteer shortage. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9, Andy Hirschberger. The bells are ringing, but the donations are coming up just a little bit short. And the Salvation Army is asking for your help down the stretch. 
A familiar face doing a familiar job this morning in Concord as Governor Chris Sununu took time to try his hand as a Salvation Army bell ringer outside the market basket. It's great to come out and uh, ring the bell, uh, get some awareness and hopefully get a, a little bit of change and some bills into the kettle because it's an organization that really makes sure that the money goes exactly where it needs to, right? To the individuals, to the families, uh, for such a variety of needs and services. But with little time left, <laughs> donations are down and the problem is volunteers. There aren't enough of them to man the kettles around the state. In Concord, for example, there are 10 kettle locations, but they can normally only staff six or seven. Fewer kettles, less money coming in. We are probably about $3,000 behind last year, but I'm optimistic that we here in Concord will be able to make that $95,000 goal. But as uh, you look at to the rest of the state, there are many places that are further behind. The statewide goal is $1 million. Officials say people are being extremely generous. I give a lot during the holidays, and um, the place I work gives a lot. And um, we do a lot of fundraising because there's always somebody worse off than you that needs it. The money dropped in these kettles helps people with everything from food to heating oil. So maybe it's just a dollar here or a dollar there. That can make a world of difference for an individual or family. This is by far the Salvation Army's biggest fundraiser and the money that they raise here helps fund many of their programs for the rest of the year. In Concord, Andy Hershberger, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Summersworth Woman Wins All Ellen's 12 Days of Giveaway Prizes. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9, Jean Mackin. You know, we, we've been smiling ear to ear since learning about this. You know how difficult it is to get tickets to one of Ellen's 12 days of giveaway shows? Well, one person, one person in the entire country is selected to win all of the prizes from all 12 days of giveaways. And she is from right here in Summersworth. Well, we just surprised Carol at her house and take a look what happened. Merry Christmas, Kitty! Merry what? Christmas, Carol Wackle! Are you kidding me? We are here from WMUR with the biggest holiday surprise oh for you. Oh my God, you're Jean you Mackin. and you, oh Carol! God. You, Carol, are the winner of Ellen's 12 Days of Giveaway contest. You win every single oh. prize <laughs> on all of Ellen's giveaway shows. You're kidding me! All 92 prizes valued at more than forty thousand dollars. Hug, 92 prizes, trips and spa vacations, gift cards, electronics, cookware, luggage, concerts. This list goes on and on and on. Carol was selected at random, the one and only winner, and what a selection. She is a cancer survivor and wants to share this good luck with her family. We will have much more from our big surprise coming up at 6 o'clock. So many fun moments to share. That is one happy family here in this town tonight. Live in Summersworth, Jean Mackin, WMUR News Now. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Very cool indeed. We're very happy for her and her family. Federal judge rules Obamacare unconstitutional. Democrats immediately vow appeal. Let's take a listen to the video from ABC News. 
Please not coffee center and have the best of both worlds, all with one appliance. The single serve brewer uses our home barista reusable filter cup or any variety K cup with three cup sizes and instant heat up. The programmable 12 cup brewer lets you enjoy premium features like adjustable brew strength, auto on and off, and brew pause. The Cuisinart Coffee Center. When it comes to coffee makers, you can have it all. From impassioned campaign speeches. Everyone agrees we're going to protect pre-existing conditions. To TV ads with an overt pledge. I'm fighting to protect pre-existing conditions. Fighting for those with pre-existing conditions. Republican candidates are working overtime to convince voters they're committed to giving Americans access to affordable health care regardless of pre-existing conditions. President Trump even upping the ante, tweeting that Republicans will protect people with pre-existing conditions far better than Dems. Yet the White House is currently supporting a 20-state GOP-led lawsuit that would do away with Obamacare's requirement for insurance companies to cover prior illnesses. You've been saying that Democrats want to take away pre-existing conditions. I mean, it, it, it's your administration that's supporting a lawsuit that no, would no, allow no, no, help no, but I'm going to replace pre-existing conditions, and I've always been there. What the Democrats are going to do is they're going to destroy our entire health care, and you're not going to have any health care. But Republicans can't point to any specific plan they've proposed to protect pre-existing conditions, something that affects up to one in two Americans. ABC's Mary Bruce spoke with voters. Don't just say replace it. Have something there. Have some meat and potatoes there that you're going to give us. Obamacare's current protections are why Democrats are once again touting the health law after years of running away from it. The issue now playing out in races across the country. It's just a, a, a bunch of rhetoric from both sides, so it's kind of hard to uh, know who's actually telling the truth or who's actually, you know, on my side. A recent ABC News Washington Post poll shows more voters believe Democrats when it comes to health care promises, 50 percent compared to just 34 percent putting their trust in Republicans. I'm Natalie Brunel for ABC News Live. Okay, and there you go on that video. A federal judge delivered a stunning Rebook to the Affordable Care Act late Friday ruling. The individual mandate is unconstitutional and nuffling the entire ACA in a case brought by 20 Republican state attorney generals. And that does it for the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you back here later on today for another newscast. And I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Goodbye, everyone.